amateur photography in the freezing cold is really difficult, especially when you're just starting out. You really don't understand what you've got to do until you do it in practice. So I watch a lot of YouTube tutorials. Um, I read a lot of things online of how to set up the mount, uh, telescope and software. But really you don't get to understand it until you do it in person. Um, and doing it outside in the cold is really tough. And the first few times I tried it, um, it was pretty demoralizing actually because I couldn't get it to work uh, and it was really cold uh, and you question what you're even doing outside but when you see that final picture it all becomes worth it if you look at my last video with the Orion Nebula um, that was my first ever successful attempt at astrophotography today I'm going to be going for M31 the Andromeda Galaxy it is minus six minus seven degrees at the minute so it's pretty cold for the UK uh, obviously you can see loads of snow, um, but that's fine. It's a clear sky tonight and nothing is going to stop me. It's also uh, a 1% illuminated moon, which is brilliant. Um, so it's a new moon tomorrow. Um, so that's really good for the Andromeda Galaxy. It means that there's less light in the night sky. Um, I'm shooting from a class 5 portal sky today, which is really good. Um, I'm currently in the process of moving from a class 8 to class 5 sky. If you don't know the portal scale, effectively it runs from 1, 1 to 9, 1 being no light pollution and nine being the most horrible light pollution you can get. So moving from eight, which is terrible, to five is pretty good to be honest. And five for the UK um, is actually pretty reasonable. Going for ISO 800, uh, two and a half minute exposures uh, for as long as I can do it. So about four hours if I can, but most likely probably end up being two and a half, three hours. incredibly cold outside. I did have the plan to image the Andromeda Galaxy. Uh, it didn't quite happen. I did buy a focal reducer, but when I connect it into my camera, it doesn't seem to focus. So I can't see any stars. So without the focal reducer, I just can't get the galaxy to fill the frame. Otherwise it's too zoomed in as it currently is. So I need the focal reducer, um, which is a 0.5 times focal reducer will double my field of view. So without it, there's no point taking the image of Andromeda. So I've switched targets now, so I'm going for Thor's helmet. It's freezing outside, like I said, it's so cold, but I have to get something out of this. There's no way I can wait for clear sky. Unfortunately, the way that my telescope's set up, it's gonna go behind a couple trees, um, which means I'm not gonna get as much time with it as I was hoping to get with the Andromeda Galaxy. Um, but I should still get an hour to two hours worth of data, which I think can produce a really good image. And what I've seen from the exposures as they're coming through, they seem pretty decent. So I'm expecting it to continue that way. This is Thor's helmet here. As you can see, it looks really promising. Uh, there's some really good detail on there. Once I stack these images on top of each other and remove the noise, we should get a really nice final picture. Using the Optolong L Extreme again. So I used that in my last video when I was doing the Orion Nebula. Using a narrowband filter like the L-Extreme makes a huge difference. It obviously only lets in H-Alpha and O3, which is really important, especially for a nebula like this. So it's been a couple days now. Um, the final picture I did get was an hour and a half's worth of imaging. So it's good and it created a nice clear photo, but there's still some noise in there. Um, and I really want to make this a special photo. Tonight, it is a clear sky and I can get about two hours worth of imaging done. Um, we should bring the total exposure time to about three and a half hours. I think that's more than enough time to create a much clearer photo, remove that noise um, and create a much better final picture. And I'd be so glad that I put in this extra time and effort to really improve the signal to noise ratio and I think it makes a huge difference to the clarity of your photo. So a jump from an hour and a half's worth of exposure time to three and a half hours is huge 
and I will remove that noise from your photo and make it so much clearer. And it is a lot more hard work, but in the end, when you have that final picture, you know it's worth it. Like I said, it's another clear night tonight. Uh, the session's going pretty well actually, so we've done 36 or 50 exposures. Uh, they seem pretty clear, I think they'll make a huge difference to the final image. It's a really clear sky tonight, hoping you can see it, it's probably quite difficult to see actually through the camera. But can't see any clouds at all and I think that will really help with the final picture. It's amazing really to think that what I'm imaging right now is 13,000 light years away, 10 to 20 light years in diameter and I'm able to capture it in my telescope. I think that is just incredible.